<clears throat> good morning everyone uh, today is we have to perform the experiment under virtual mode measurement of the strain so <clears throat> what is strain that is a by simple definition the strain we know the strain that means whenever a stress will apply to object so there will be deformations of the object. Now for strain measurement, the strain gauge sensors are generally used with uh, signal conditioning circuit. So strain gauge are basically the resistive sensor to resistance change under the application of the force or strain. They can be used for measurement of the force, strain, stress, pressure, even displacement and the acceleration. So this parameter can be measured by a strain gauge. Now how it will work, so I recall when an external force is applied on an object due to which there is a deformation occurs in the shape of the object, this deformation in the shape is both compressive or strain side, it's called the strain and it is measured by the strain gauge. When the object deforms within the limit of the elasticity, Limit of the elasticity means when, uh, according to the definition, uh, strain by strain, this is constant, the ratio, which is called the Young modulus. Either it becomes narrower or longer, or it becomes shorter or broader, broadens as a result of fit, there is a change of the resistance. So, principle of the working of the strain, principle of working of the strain gauge can also be summarized as when the force is applied to any metallic wire, not the semiconductor material, metallic wire, its length increases due to the strain. As well as the metallic wire, the, its length decreases when a compressive force is applied. The more is applied force, the more will be the strain, and more is the increase in the length of the wire. If L is the L1 is the initial length of the wire, L2 is the final length. After application of the force, then the strain is given by per unit change of the nominal length, how much will be a change in length. Now for a strain gauge, the object, the registered material has a length as well as the cross section. So compressive force is applied to the resistance, not only the its length, but also its cross section will change. That is written that means further as the length of the stretched wire increases, the diameter decreases. Because if we uh, assume the volume remain constant, so this will happen. More most changes are made from a constant and alloy, but we can use the nichrome alloy also. Various constant alloys and the karma alloys have been designed so that the temperature effects of the resistance of the strain is itself largely cancel out the resistance change of the gauge due to the thermal expansion of the object under test. So by construction, the strain gauge can be built with a resistive foil which are bonded over the backing material which is called the gate backing and the terminals are drawn out by brazing and the leaves are drawn out by brazing or solid. So this is the general form of the construction stream but there is a another type of construction but most of the strain gauge which are used for the measurement of, of practical purpose <coughs> is available in this form of the construction. Now there is a short uh, there is a uh, short derivation that means when what will happen. So that is the experiment. That is a that means uh, when a tensile strain is applied to the wire, it produces a positive strain causing the length to increase and the area 
decrease the cross section area. Thus, when the wire is strained, there is a change in, in the dimension. Let del L be the change in length, del A be the change in the area, and del D be the change in the diameter, and del R the change in the resistance. So, using these notations, so we can derive the expression where we find that means in this step we find in this step that means the final expression that means the poison ratio in application of the poison ratio that means the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain why because whenever the force is applied to the resistive element set inside they are the lateral strain. Uh, so, sorry, longitudinal strain. Uh, its length will increase. But simultaneously, the cross section will decrease. Why? Because due to the existence of the lateral strains. <clears throat> so, we have to consider both the lateral and the longitudinal strain. And this ratio is called the uh, Poisson's ratio, new. So finally, according to the mathematical steps, the strain gets that is a, this expression, del R by R, that is the power unit change of the resistance due to the longitudinal strain is given by this expression. Here we include here you can see that means there is a strain plus one uh, plus two into new into del L by L, that, that means the proportional of the lateral strain is calculated using the Poisson's ratio. Plus, there is an another effect, the third term. Why? Because due to the change in the material characteristics, that is the conductivity or resistivity, which is known as the piezoresistive effect, that is also present. But the del row by row, this effect, that is the coordinate change of the resistivity is observed largely in case of a semiconductor resistance. That is the conductivity of the resistivity will change. Otherwise, the conductivity and the resistivity remain constant for a metallic wire. And what is the parameter? <coughs> that is the uh, this is a sensitivity factor called the gauge factor of the strain gauge. GF, that is equal to power unit change of the strain, how much will be the power unit change in the resistance. So, del R by R divided by del L by L is called the gauge factor. Or it indicates the sensitivity. How much, how large or how small the resistivity, power unit change of the resistivity will occur due to the power unit strain. But according to the Following scale, the gauge factor can be calculated plus 1 plus 2 new. If we consider both the strain that is lateral and the longitudinal strain. So that is the formula of the final form of the gauge factor for a given strain gauge material. For a metallic wire, the usual gauge factor in the range that is 2 in present case. Now, the what will be the nature of the signal conditioning circuit for the strain gauge? Basically, the signal conditioning circuit is the forearm DC Western bridge. So, one arm, the strain gauge uh, resistive material is included in one arm of the Western bridge. And the, under balance condition, the value of the strain gauge, a value of the strain gauge as well as the, all the other passive resistance must be equal. So, the bridge is balanced. But whenever the strain will occur, then there will be a deformations and there will be a change in the resistant data. So, out of balance of the null voltage is given by this expression. Where Vx is the DC supply voltage applied to the four long resistant V. So, under balance condition, this becomes zero. But under when the strain is applied, there will be out of balance voltage. But what are the important aspects? But the strain gauge is measured 
for a stress measurement of the stress or strain in a cantilever applications generally that means when the two strain gauge resistance are bonded or mounted over the upper and the lower size of the cantilever beam that means upper resistance when the cantilever beam bends due to the application of the concentrated load so the upper resistance will elongate and the bottom resistance will be in compression so that's why the true resistance must be connected to the two adjacent arms of the western dc western bridge so there are three configuration when you use the when we generally use the only the single strain gauge resistance then it is called the quarter bridge and this is the equation of the quarter bridge where gf is the gauge factor e epsilon is the strain divided by 4 when you use the two strain gauge resistance one in compression another in tension this is called the half bridge so the half bridge is the equation of the half bridge is gf into epsilon by 2 when all the registers are when all four strain gauge registers are used which occupy the four arms of the western bridge then it is called the quarter bridge and the equation is the uh, is given by minus gf into epsilon please note the sign that is minus not the plus Now, in case of a that means generally in strain gauge signal conditioning circuit, generally we can use the two strain gauge if we consider the half bridge. The one resistance is in compression and another resistance strain gauge resistance is in tension. Then the other two resistance are also strain gauge, but these strain gauge registers. Yeah. Will be will not be subjected to any of the strain condition that is compression or the tension. That's why this R1 R2 the strain gauge resistance is called the dummy gauge. So purpose of the dummy gauge is to use the temperature effect. That means here only the the error voltage generated by the DC western bridge indicate the DC signal. Uh, which is uh, proportional to the strain. But if the temperature will change, then what will happen? The nominal resistance value will also change. So this will be super important. That means the error voltage consists of the two parts. One is called the voltage due to the strain, and another part, that is the plus part, is the error voltage due to the change in the temperature. Why change in the temperature? That means when this whole encapsulation in the form of the four arm western bridge will be subjected to the temperature changes, it will be cancelled out. Otherwise, suppose if the temperature of the dummy registers are at a different, then this expression is not valid or this will be erroneous. So it should be kept in mind that means the strain gauge bridge should be mounted in an environment where the temperature or the registers will be subjected to the change in the temperature so that the temperature effect will be cancelled out. Even if we use a quarter bridge, the bridge sensitivity factor will increase, bridge sensitivity, not the strain gauge sensitivity factor, that is the gauge factor, will increase to the maximum. <clears throat> but the temperature will be effectively cancelled out because this bridge will be subjected to the same uh, temperature effect. So that is the uh, basic idea of the signal conditioning circuit which must be connected. For the present experiment, that is the measurement of strain, we use a up bridge where all the strain gauge registers are of equal value, identical. So resistance strain gauge SG1 and SG2 are active gauges. That means they are subject to the tension and the compression. SG1 and the SG4, these two. But these are called the dummy gauge SG2 and the SG3. The gauge factor of the material is 2. And the nominal resistance of the odd 4 arm is 350 ohm. 
compression case. And these are the apparatus list. What are the apparatus to be used for setting up the extended circuit? These are listed and these are the specifications. DC power supply of value 5 volt. Decade resistance box. There is a variable resistance for ad null adjustment decade resistance box. There is a reflecting galvanometer. There is also a DVM or digital voltmeter which acts alternatively to measure the error voltage, a particular key for closing the excited, closing the circuit and four amps 10 gauge bridge and the register, a fixed register value of 100 kilo ohm. <clears throat> so these are the list of apparatus to be used. This resistance, that means the fixed resistance must be used according to the circuit. Now, there are four run methods, run one to run four. So the procedure is like that. A key switch is placed in series, A2. So not only the strain gauge, but also and potential divider circuit is parallelly connected to the yellow and the green band. It is a convention that means uh, from the stem gauge bridge, four colored wires should be drawn out, like black, yellow, red, and the green. So the potential divider resistive network is connected across the yellow and the green. So there is a special purpose for adding uh, using this potential uh, divider circuit where uh, R1 is a decade resistance that can be varied. R2 is a fixed resistance. So first, the, the switch should be open K2 so that the potential liberator will be uh, will be connected parallel to this strain gauge piston bridge branch. Make connection as indicated in the figure, that figure, this figure. Then measure the supply voltage. The voltage should remain constant. Now the different run will start. Connect the null detector spot reflecting galvanometer between the two point A and B. Here and this across this. It should be remembered that means the error is considered between the this point of the western bridge and this point that is the potential value network. <coughs> the value of the R2 350 ohm and the R1 in the decay resistance so that there is a null across these things. That means the potential of this A point and the B point should be identical. So there is a uh, null voltage that can be achieved by adding the R1 resistance, ticket resistance, which is written. Now, <clears throat> in fact, the, in the videography, you will see that the, this is the arrangement of the strain gate, but this should be mounted below a particular weighing pan over which the loading drum should be put. So this is uh, this uh, that means uh, the whole arrangement is seen in the video graphic. So under zero gram condition, that means when there is no load, then the balance condition should be achieved. Now apply no load successively for each and for each load adjust the value of the arrangement because when the load is put in states of the hundred gram, then there will be out of balance voltage. So the R one should be vary to rest of the null. Then the change value of the R1 in each case should be noted. Ascertain whether the SG1 is under tension or compression. At each load condition, the increment of the, that means the change in the resistance, del R, that means, del R means, it will be del R1. In fact, the how much amount of the resistance has been changed, the previous value of the R1, 
and the modified value of the uh, that means the change value of the R1 to restore the NAR after putting the load, 100 gram load, that should be noted and this gives the data. This is the expression depending on whether SG1 is under tension and compression and using this formula the strain can be calculated for a given load. I repeat the other procedure for decreasing load. In fact, now the load is increased in steps of 100 gram, starting from the 0 gram. Then the strain must be calculated or the data must be calculated, not strain. Strain should be calculated finally from the based on the observation. Then when the load is, the value of the load is 1000 gram, that is 1 kg, then the load is decreased in states of the 100 gram in a reverse direction. And similarly, the Taylor value should be calculated. Why the load is increasing? Why the on the run one, the increasing value of the load and the decreasing value of the load should be considered? There is a scientific reason. So this is run one. And for run two, we do not use a spotlight, spot lifting galvanometer, rather we use the EVM between the A and B. So without any, that is zero gram load again, using the, uh, the Rizanto is that means not the null method, but it is called the direct method so that R1 is adjusted to rest of the round instead of the null condition. Then uh, the null voltage, that means in the DVM, what is the problem? You cannot get the exactly the zero voltage because it is a digital voltmeter which has a fourth significant digit. So the least significant, you can adjust the null, that means the least significant value that will appear over the display of the DVF, that may be after decimal point, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 like that. And that voltage should be recorded, noted that it has V0. And impress a definite load, finite load of 200 gram, and note the VAB, that is out of balance voltage. VAB, rate by the millivolt-meter. So there is no null, there is no null condition to be restored. Only you just put the load and take the reading from the digital voltmeter, which is as VAB. Then the bridge sensitivity parameter should be calculated using the following formula. That is VAB minus V0 divided by VA supply voltage, R1 dash by R1 by RSUR, which is the nominal value. In fact, here also, why? Because VAB is, will give you the voltage non-zero, but again, R1, that is the decay resistance, must be adjusted to rest of the null. And that new value of the R1 will be R1 dash. And the previous value is R1. That should be taken into account. But VAB is not zero. VAB is a, that means without adjustment, what is the value of the VAB? That should be recorded. From this relation, we get the bridge sensitivity. Now remove that load. Now, for the run to should be uh, performed using only one load. One load. That may be a 300 gram. That may be you can use a 400 gram and so on. So, what is run 3? Adjust the R1 again to secure best possible balance condition. This is also, uh, that means using the DVM. So, adjust the R1 to secure the, that means under zero load condition, best possible balance of the bridge, impress the known load successively and for each load. That means in states of the 100 grams, we can use the, put the load and for each loading condition, the value of the VAB should be noted using the DVM and the strain must be calculated using the formula. The value of the S should be calculated from this equation previously. The gauge factor is fixed. The S value <coughs> will also be fixed for a given circuit. Only the VAB will vary according to the loading condition. So RAM3 is a measurement of the strain using direct method, that is using the digital voltmeter. Then run 4.
Kali, the key for the, uh, for the run, one to run three should be open. But run for me, run for allow, the key should be closed. So the registry ladder network is excluded for the run one to run three, but it should be included for run four only. So that's why the key K2 should be closed. These are the value of the passive parameter. So again, with using the BBM between B and R, not B and A. B and R on the run four. So that means only the bridge should be taken into consideration, not the registry network. And the loading is allowed and uh, loading is allowed so that uh, the run four, we get, uh, we follow this procedure. So what will be the nature of the, what will be the sample data for each run? First of all, you have to <clears throat> write up the reports for the following condition, that is draw the experimental circuit diagram, list of the apparatus, tabulate the experimental leather. So tabulate the experimental leather means observation. And from the run one only, you draw a card. Strain versus load characteristic for increasing as well as the decreasing load on the same graph paper. Label the curves clearly which curve corresponds to increasing load and which curve corresponds to decreasing load. So, this is the sample value under run one, that is null method. The last column indicates the strain. It is not written. For decreasing loading, uh, increasing loading condition and the decreasing loading condition. This is the strain. This is of the order of trade to minus 5, minus 4. So the load should be increased from 0 grams to 1000 grams in the increasing order as well as from the decreasing order in the reverse manner. So that is the sample observations of the round 1. Round 2 is used for the bridge sensitivity and for a 200 gram weight load, it should be recorded. But run one, there is a case of decreasing load, increasing load only. There is no decreasing load. So these are the measurement and these are the value recorded by the DVM in millivolt. And this is the value. And this is the value of the strain obtained using the formula under run three. We have checked that means for a 300 gram increasing load, the strain is 2.364 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, for run 1, under run 1, for 300 gram load, the strain is 1.856 into 10 to the power minus 4. The value may be different. But it is very high. Increasing, it is 1.713. But for run 3, it is 2.364. It is desired. That means this value and the, the same the value of the strain under round 3 and the round 1 should be as much as close. But there is no provision right now. You cannot perform the experiment physically. So you have to use the sample data. And these are the result of the round 4 for the different circuit. Here also for 200 gram, you can know the value of the strain is 1.41 to the minus 5. Now check the result for 200 gram. The value is very close, 1.650 into the power minus 5. And under run 1 for 200 gram loading, it is this very, very, very deviated or high value. So these are the sample results for the run 1 to run 4. And the sample calculations are shown for the above sample data, for the above sample data already shown. For round one, for round two, for round three, and for round. So the nature of the car will be like that. Now this train value red color is for increasing load, but the blue color car is the car for the decreasing load. So why this difference will occur now? 
you must understand the logic or reasoning a reason that means when the increasing and the decreasing loads condition is followed in this extreme when the load is put in step that means it is not like that you put 100 gram load and again back to zero over 100 gram you put another 100 gram so successive loading will occur now what will happen in case of a strain gauge element <clears throat> when the loading is occurred there will be a stored energy mechanical stored energy inside the strain due to the deformation so when in successive manner you load the strain gauge bridge to the thousand gram the strain that means the energy will be stored maximum amount of the energy will be stored that is mechanical energy in fact it is equivalent to the potential energy now when the loading is withdrawn in succession so what will happen the energy will release but the same amount of the energy will not be released that is the exact reason why because some amount of the energy will be stored very small and this is called the hysteresis effect of the material so due to the hysteresis characteristic the strain in increasing loading will not be identical to the strain in the decreasing loading and that is reflected in the result also under round one try to understand the two values are different in fact the strain for decreasing loading is higher than the strain than that in the increasing loading and the nature of the car so that's why the car should be plotted to indicate the history safety the maximum deviation for a corresponding loading is a degree of the hysteresis. It is desired the hysteresis, uh, uh, this difference must be as minimum as small. So these are the all about of the strain gauge, measurement of the strain gauge expense. Now you can see the videography of the whole experiment. Video. 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 Video.
take the value of R1, then we will decrease in the same order reversely to the zero. And we will see that the value of R1 will be slightly changed from the increasing part to the decreasing part due to the distance. Now, for run 2, change the connection from galvanometer to millivoltmeter.
So you have seen the videography. One point should be noted. That means for run three and run four, you will find the for the same loading condition, the millivolt meter is different. That is for VAV under run three, for four hundred gram loading condition, it is point seven. But under RAN4, it is 1.40, just double. That means the circuit under RAN3 and the RAN4 are like that. The RAN4, the bridge sensitivity would be double. That's why. The bridge sensitivity will be doubled in the formula. 2 into S. Where S is the bridge sensitivity which has been measured under RAN3 condition. So this point should be noted down. Uh, <coughs> from the observation data. So thank you. If you have any questions uh, about the experiment, then please ask. If you have any questions, please ask about the, the given experience. Otherwise, we have to uh, prepare the report and send it back on, on or before seven days. Especially before the puja vacations. The scan copy of the report should be sent to my mail ID for all of you. In fact, I'll recording 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 of Santa on the air. Oh, Jamie, they are these. I did the second party. Okay. Oh. 
So now there is a time to mark the attendance. I am calling you roll number. A name. Shaming Hawk. Pigeon, sir. Pigeon, sir. Vishal Barmon. Yes, sir. Ognim Chatterjee. Yes, sir. Abu Swait Sheikh. Yes, sir. Ananda Ch uh, Chakraborty. Present, sir. Motibur Rahman. Present, sir. Devraj Banerjee. Present, sir. Mousimi Soren. Yes, sir. Alamin Islam. Present, sir. Muhammad Musabir Alam Middha. Roll number 57. Muhammad Musabir Alam Middha. Is that sent? Yes, sir. Achi, achi, sir. Network is problem, sir. Amisha Parveen. Present, sir. Joyal Dutto. Present, sir. Susmit Rudro. Present, sir. Robin Chalak. Yes, sir. Bishop Mahajan. Yes, sir. Aritra Mal. Yes, sir. Vipradash Mandol. Yes, sir. Ruplekha Rai. Yes, sir. Ondila Salda. Present, sir. Ruksanda Hussain. Present, sir. Anubhav Rai. Anubhav yes, Rai. Sir. Yes, sir. Rudraning Sarda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Olomi Das. Obijit Das. Yes, sir. Manjur Alam Midde. Uh, Manjur Alam Midde. Yes, sir. Nayan Saren. Yes, sir. Rajeshi Bhattacharya. Yes, sir. Yoyatirindo Sarkar. Yes, sir. Sashwata Mukaji. Present, sir. Sostik Kanjilal. Present, sir. Vinay Kumar Rajak. Present, sir. Mama Devni Samet. Mama Devni Samet. Present, sir. Jayanta Mandal. Sir, present. Robik Nath. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sambit Vishash. Hello, sir. Akash Singhuray. Present, sir. Devani Burwa. Yes, sir. Okay. So, all 37 students are present for today's experience. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, sir. Uh, you prepare the report and send it to me via mail. Preferably in the next week, that is the honor before 7 days. So, thank you.